Christopher Yu started with d4. Hans played knight f6. Here, Christopher played the unusual knight c3. The idea of knight c3 is that he wants to play bishop f4, the London, and use the knight in a faster way. Normally, we don't block our c pawn in the queen's pawn games, but here the knight can be used along with the bishop. So, Hans plays the natural d5, bishop f4, and e6. And here comes knight b5, the whole point of playing knight c3. So, both pieces are attacking c7, which means black has only two options, bishop d6, which will lead to an exchange of knight and bishop, or knight a6. So, knight a6 played by Hans. Christopher Yu plays e3, bishop e7, knight f3. Hans doesn't want to exchange off this nice bishop for this knight. He would want to kick this knight away in the future. Castles, bishop e2. So both sides are developing their pieces. Knight h5. Hans is getting ready to exchange off this bishop, the London bishop. Bishop e5, f6. Bishop goes back, c6. So now you can see black's piece, pieces are going forward and black pawns are kicking away white's pieces. Knight c3. Pawn c5, gaining space and castles. Here, now Hans decided to exchange of the bishop as soon as white castles, because now h file being open does not help white's rook, because white's rook has already gone to the f1 square after castling. c4, Hans closes out the queen side, preparing to gain more space on the queen side. e4, counterattack in the center. Bishop b4, attacking the knight, takes, takes. Knight b1. So white wants to reroute his knight and also does not want bishop takes knight doubling his pawns. Knight c7. Now we will see a few moves that reroute the pieces to better squares. Maneuvering moves. Bishop d6, knight d2, b5. So these are very natural moves, right? White is developing pieces and gaining space. I'm um, sorry, black is developing pieces and gaining space on the queen side. Queen d7. Rook e1 and a5, a3. So if you look at this position, you might think that black would want to play rook b8 and play b4, right? But this is where Hans plays really well. He does not do anything about his queen side space advantage. Now he starts conquering things on the king side because white is stuck on the queen side. This, these pieces are stuck here and black has the advantage here. Normally we would want to play on the same side that we have the advantage. But Hans plays h5. He is transferring this advantage to the king side as well. He's saying the pieces are all stuck for you. I'm going to move my king, get the rook in and attack on the h5. Look at my two good, good bishops. Queen d2, king g7, f4. So white is trying to block one of the bishops. Rook h8. You can see h4 is coming. Bishop f3, f5. First, hand stops the g4 move at all costs and also stops the f pawn from moving forward by playing f5. Rook e2. Knight e8. Rerouting the knight to f6. Bishop f7. Rook e5. A very nice sacrifice by Christopher Yu because if you take it, hands didn't take it, but if you take it after d takes, white gets this nice d4 square and e6 is coming. And the black king is not safe. So this would be slightly better for white. So Hans does not take it. He just plays it's his plan. Knight f6. Knight e3. h4. The break has happened. Queen f2. h3. It's like a ramming goat. Rook e2. Rook d8. Just developing his rook. And giving extra support to d5. Queen e1. So Hans is just waiting for the right moment. So now knight e4, the knight jumps in, g4, white has to take extreme measures to deal with the attack. Bishop e5, this is the moment where Hans decided to take the exchange because his pieces are now active and h3 is already done. So he decides now I can take the rook. That rook was anyway supposed to be taken. Like that's a rook that is that is destined to be sacrificed, right? Now, so black takes it now. And after pawn takes, he just plays pawn takes g2. Rook g2 and rook h3. The plan is simple. He wants to play rook h8. 
doubling up the rooks and threatening mate actually right white played e6 instead white should have played just bishop takes e4 and after pawn takes e4 he should have just played knight d4 getting his pieces in and getting some compensation for the exchange sacrifice but instead he played after rook takes he played rook h3 and he played pawn e6 this allows black pieces to be active now pawn takes bishop takes knight takes queen takes a lot of exchanges because black is already an exchange up exchanging of pieces is going to help black so the idea that christopher you had was that after knight d4 there is some activity for white pieces but queen f6 takes so here his idea was if pawn takes queen takes back and he has some counterplay g6 is slightly under fire knight e6 is coming but then can you find out the move that hans played in this position to kill all counterplay and stay an exchange up sorry yeah an exchange up hans played rook e8 no drama just wants to take back the bishop without any problems without even allowing queen to take back f5 was played now how would you react will you still uh, play rook take bishop yeah rook take bishop rook g6 is nothing because queen can take it and then the other queen will hang so queen f2 and now just rook h4 threatening mate so here why can play rook g6 but you can see this position is already completely lost because rook g6 queen takes pawn takes happened but check and black is going to end up an exchange up anyway takes takes and just rook check and the b pawn also falls it's surprising white decided to play on but yeah there is not much hope here black uh, hands actually finished the games with a very nice combination as well let's let's continue pawn b4 so black is trying to get a pass pawn actually get more than one pass pawn takes takes he plays c3 he does not even play rook takes pawn and grind out the win because then king takes pawn it can become a draw he plays c3 he just pushes a pawn and now b5 when can you find out the beautiful way that hands won this i mean everything wins c2 wins a lot of things win but hands played rook takes b5 because knight takes rook and c2 and after king d4 white just decided to throw in the towel he resigned and that is how hands scored his first victory in the st louis chess club the us championship